Today we've got a MacBook A1989 and this one has come in saying that it would not turn on after a couple of weeks of no use. So it's been sitting around somewhere, someone then tried to turn it on, no luck, tried charging it, nothing happened and Apple has decided that this needs a new logic board. So let's open it up, have a look and then see what we've got. Very first thing to notice is that the batteries are a little bit puffy not a big problem, shouldn't stop it from turning on, but certainly something to take note of. It's interesting that the battery connector here is missing its lock tab. Without that lock tab there, it's not going to work so well, so we'll actually go and get a replacement lock tab now. First thing we'll do is take the battery screw out before we start stuffing around with that lock tab. So we'll just take one from a donor board. The lock tabs are just pushed in, so you, you can just take them out, like so. Okay, lock tab attached. The reason why I don't believe this will be the fault is because it wouldn't have happened just sitting around in the shelf. See also, they have attacked this here. Not sure why they would pull the NAND cover away. Let's see if we get any charge current. 20 milliamp shown there. 20 there. Still 20 there. And 20 there. So we have 20 milliamp on all ports. And they don't seem to be restarting. So if I was to take a guess here, I would say that we have a shorted capacitor. We're going to take the board out and see what we find. The key way in which this particular board has a tendency to fail to give the symptoms that we're experiencing is usually over here. There's a couple of capacitors above the input for the USB-C or likewise over on this side. Let's go under the microscope and have a look. If I had to make a guess, this is one of the areas. So let's have a look. That actually looks very clean. Looking at the other side. This also looks quite clean. It's a damage up here may not be the fault but we'll just keep looking for the moment i personally like to try and observe the entire board before i start doing any actual work on it particularly if we cannot find a specific smoking gun fault immediately like a visibly destroyed capacitor or something like that it does bother me that somebody has been messing around here I've pulled the cover off the T2, they might have been worried that the T2 is faulty, that's also a possibility because the T2 signals to the USB-C controllers to switch over somebody's brushed something off this PMIC controller because we're not getting the 5 volt and it's only 20 milliamp it gives me some hope so we're just going to Check the caps using continuity mode, see if anything comes up shorted. Okay. Couldn't see anything obvious on the USB-C input, so we're going to check see if PP bus is shorted. And it would appear that our PV bus is very shorted. Alright, so this is a slightly less common failure mode. But with a large short like that on the PP bus, probably the easiest way to get to it is to inject some power. Now, we do want to be careful because through the PP bus, we can actually directly get to the CPU. So should we put anything more than about 0.9 or 1 volt we risk destroying the CPU one thing we can check is the resistances for all of these regulators here and see if they are higher 1.59 that's more than the short 
two, two, there we go, 1.5, 1.6. Okay, so they're actually okay. I have confidence that we actually do not have a CPU MOSFET short. Instead, it is something else. We just gotta find it. So, hoping with a little bit of an injection, we will okay there. It could be so many things. What I'm going to try first is to actually see if we get a pulsing output on the USB-C power. If we get a pulse showing up on the graph, then it may be possible to detect where it is without needing to do any injection. But unfortunately that looks pretty hard and steady, so we're not going to have any luck there. We're going to have to do the injection. Oh, we don't have any output yet, but we're about to put the power out. Here we go. And we're definitely getting the two amps. So immediately we see there's a hot spot, and that looks like it's by the speaker amp area, which is a good thing. And I think I can see the cap. It's surprising how many times that you can't see the cap until you have an infrared test on it, and then you get the area, and then even from a long distance you can see the cap. So I was, once I knew where to look, that became very obvious. This little bit of damage here, you can see it split the cap. So I dare say we remove that and our system should be back online. Uh, let's see if our PV bus is still shorted. Back into continuity mode. And we have a healthy PV bus again. Already heading over 2k, so that was the problem. If we have a look at the board view and the schematic, it's this capacitor here, and it's a 22 microfarad, 805, 25 volts. I don't have any of those specific caps on hand, so I'll just take it from a donor board. Except we're not going to take it from this donor board because it is all horribly liquid damaged. This one looks substantially better. Interestingly, there's an itty bitty chip out of that, so we're not going to take that one. We'll take this one here, which is the same cap. Okay, replacement is done. Yes, there is solder back there. It's just a very small fillet, but that is done. Everything connected that needs to be. Let's see if we can get a boot. Power in. We have our 20 volts. That's a very good start. We have fan spins. We have an Apple logo. We have success. This person was fortunate enough that they decided to get a second opinion rather than listening to the Apple Genius Bar who told them there was no hope and now they've got their information back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.